Okay, so for our final lesson in this module, we're gonna see these principles applied in action, especially the card counting mechanic, and then we'll go into further depth once we get into in-game execution. This replay is from the Axie Elite Open number two, which happened on the 22nd of August. This was the first in the string of esports tournaments that Axie Infinity is endorsing with their esports server. And we're in the finals, we're up against Azarian, we're down O2. Too. Elijah needs to win. Elijah needs this dub, unless it's going to be a clean sweep. Yeah, I really did need the dub. I was feeling it. I was like, man, we're down 0-2. This is do or die. So I was fully locked in. I went with um, a couple of Biden's options here because I know he runs the shrimp with the garish back door. So I'm trying to kind of protect my backliner especially. But if somehow he does get dropped, I even put it up front on my plant. I was losing to his classic shrimpinator. So I'm taking all the precautions I can. Let's see how this match uh, pans out. I think it comes down to the back door. I think Elijah does have the better team comp. You have the advantage with the Biden's aqua against the Terminator in the 1v1 straight up. Chief is absolutely right. Uh, that is why I switched to this. I hadn't played this yet in our previous matches, but I made the adjustment to go with the Arco, the Bidens, tons of beef and durability, double ways of speeding up against the Terminator. But this isn't straight up because there's the back door involved. Yep. So it comes down to if Elijah can catch Azarian, and Azarian has been getting all the back doors today. All of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, they've all been working. The timing has been right. The cards have been right. It's all been working for him tonight. So Elijah needs to be very, very careful. With the Arco and the dual blade and the hair, Elijah should be able to kill this tank fairly quickly and get into the 3v2 in the lead. Once he's in the 3v2, he has to be careful, right? That's when he has to be careful. But even this yeah. one can beat the Terminator because it has the Nemo. It is possible, but the Bidens is much better because the high defense. That's what I do. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's see if uh, Azarian can get off the back door. I think if Elijah, like, if he catches Elijah like this completely, like goes in, like no defense on that backliner, yeah, I think it's going to be an issue. Because you can do some damage. Fair enough, Elijah can obviously get rid of the uh, poison with the Bidens. But... So you can hear them both talking about similar points here. Okay, so in round one, here we go. We both start with three energy, and I end up going with a pass. I don't really have a great draw here on the damage. I don't want to play the Lamb and the Arco on the backliner because those have better utility late game. They're high shield. The Lamb gets a bonus when this thing falls below 50% HP. So there isn't really much of a point in me playing it round one. So I just go ahead and pass. Oh, so Azarian going for the early uh, aggression. I like that play. Azarian damn near Especially kills my got, like, plan. The perfect hand, right? Yeah. This tank's dead yeah. already. It's already if you, yeah, if you... So they're saying my tank's already dead, and that's a fair point. But this is a great example of a game where I am going to be fighting tooth and nail to get maximum value out of all of my axes, including my plant. So here in round two, we see that I do just that. I actually play both of my Bidens, which is free. There's no harm in playing that. But a lot of players might think, I don't know if I want to play the hair and try to get value and waste any energy here because they already might feel... Feel like they're a little bit behind with their plant being almost completely dead but i decided to chuck on that extra energy i think that the risk in getting off one extra card here even if it's a little bit of damage on the plant is worth it so that's what i do but here's the thing elijah actually playing the super risky considering oh my goodness considering he was so low <laughs> He yeah. played his tank cards there and it actually worked it actually he's gonna get some value for this and stay alive so Chief's right, we get value. We chip off about 100 HP on that plant. We still have a body up front, which is useful considering how much firepower this team has. I'm simply trying to buy a little time, collect more cards on the mid and backline axes here, and it works out. Oh, wow, that, was, that worked out really well for Elijah. Not bad, not bad. Now, this is the most pivotal round, I think, that I played in the whole series. I begin with thinking that I can go risky fish, uh, basically play all my midline high damage cards to eliminate the tank. But I end up refraining from doing that because it's round three and I've really only seen him go ham in terms of damage. He's used midline and backline cards. Both garish worms are out of the equation because I saw them in round one. That means that it's less likely for him to backdoor me. He already used one thorny on his dusk. Essentially, he hasn't used yet 
yam or pumpkin yet at all. On his tank, he played one serious and one leaf bug, but as we can see, these are still alive and active. Now, the reason this pass might feel risky and a lot of players might not make it is because he still does have five energy. So if I'm keeping track of energy, I might think he has five, but if I'm keeping track of cards, I know his options are limited. If he had five energy with all the options, then yes, he could snap off the plant and then four card burst and kill my midliner. If that happened, I would get zero value out of my midliner and this would be GG for me for sure, I'd be screwed. I think many will feel that way in this spot. They'll feel threatened. They will want to get the value now, but in game, I took my time and realized the most optimal play here is to pass as we're likely to see at least one pumpkin and maybe a yam with it. And here we got the best of both worlds as we're gonna see in just a second. So I pull away all my cards. Azarian thinks about a yam and a pumpkin. But is Elijah now gonna go for it or is he gonna pass? Oh boy, oh boy. Exactly. And he passes, that was the right call. Well played by Elijah, that was huge. If he wins this game, it was that turn. Round three, that was huge. So Chief is 100% right here. Obviously, Chief's, Chief is no slouch when it comes to Axie. He works with some of the best players in the game. He might not play all that much himself these days, but his Axie IQ is very high. He understands the dynamics and rightfully identifies that that was it. That was the move that basically won me the tournament because I go on to win this game. One win for me, two for him, and then I sweep it out the rest of the way and win two more straight after this and book the gold medal, which felt fantastic. But let's go ahead and see the final, how this uh, how this kind of worked out and here's some more thoughts before we wrap up yeah that passed because zarian was expecting some uh major gps coming his way yeah exactly <laughs> so he stacked up he committed with that double poison pumpkin yeah and now look look at the cards azarian has they're terrible he's got yep. nothing he's got literally nothing and you and elijah's sitting on an arsenal of cards energy and you know googly-eyed axes actually so yeah chief's just pointing out how patience can really go a long way here as we see and the problem there is that the yam would have for sure hurt a lot but also just attacking with four cards into a pumpkin and not getting the kill would have been way too slow of a move for me here i would have gotten too far behind in the game i would have been hitting into 160 shield and then had to deal with killing him again while also having insane amounts of poison on my midline axie if I would have attacked the round prior. Uh, he's playing it to get rid of the last stand potentially and potentially defend against the back door. So here I unleash and we can see how effective it is. He has no, no pumpkin, stand. no yam. There will be no back door. It makes it a super clean kill for me as efficiently as possible. My midline is going first, so of course I want to get some maximum value out of it here. So I'm going to go for the kill, get both Nemos. I just lost, like, I mean, well, he needs to win this game, He needs to win this game or it's all over. So, let's see. And then he'll be in the 1v1 at worst. I think that should be enough to kill Elijah's Aqua as well. We get rid of his oh, wait, mid. Did he survive this? Oh boy, that is not good for Azarian. So finally, before heading into the 1v1 here, I make one other play that maybe people wouldn't necessarily find, and that is an extra additional pass. And we can hear Chief kind of break it down here. And Elijah has enough energy that he can attack here. So Azarian needs to know that, and he needs to play some defense here. He has yeah, to. Yeah, for sure. He cannot just go with like one attack and try to win. Oh, needs to, yeah, needs to... And Elijah passes. He, is, he assumes that's what Azarian's going to do when he passes. So the reason for passing there is Chief's right. I think a lot of people are gonna feel under pressure there uh, knowing I have options and cards, but because I have such a durable and favorable backline, I felt like passing really secures the 1v1 and gives me all the options moving forward, all the shield, all the speed up, and it's gonna be way too much for him to handle. So I thought he might actually think I will be attacking and I don't need to. I can pass, let him deplete some energy, and then go for the surefire close out in the following rounds. And long story short, we go back and forth a little bit here, but we end up in Blood Moon. I outspeed him all the way down to the finish. And you can see that I'm gonna get this done even with energy to spare. But I did need as many cards and as much efficiency as possible, which we managed to make happen by just utilizing the front line, the mid line as much as we could and storing up for a big time 1v1 that allowed us to push forward and win this series. To a game four now, right? Yes, now we're going to game four. It's 2-1 for Azarian. 
And on that note, we're gonna conclude this module. We're gonna be heading into our final module, which is all about in-game execution. It's gonna be live gameplay of me using every team composition that we went through in the team building module and putting it to the test. I'll be applying the principles that we just covered in this module around counting cards, counting energy, putting the entire package together for you so that you can study watch, learn, and then head out into the arena and crush the competition. I'll see you there.